uh, algebraic data types, uh, weird word, maybe, but that's because the mathematicians invented it. It's a pretty simple comp uh, thing, really. So, um, yeah. So in math, algebra is about numbers in all different forms and the operations you can do on numbers. Uh, and we can do, uh, of course, I think all program languages can add numbers and stuff, but what about types? How do we add or multiply types? Can we divide types? Does it mean anything? Well, in programming we only have two algebraic data types. It's product types and sum types. And uh, the first program language that had these uh, came in 1970. It was a functional programming language called Hope. So it's been around for a long time, but uh, not many languages have them, unfortunately. So let's start with product types. So what could that be in a programming language? Multiplication. Well, it's pretty simple. It's in Elm, it's a record type. In JavaScript, that would be an object, or in C Sharp, a class. So in this example, uh, the sum type, we could create uh, eight different values, unique values from that. And that's because a Boolean can have two values. And we have three properties, so it's two times two times two. So that's eight values. That's, that's not so hard. Um, so the mathematicians, mathematician thinks it's kind of funny to say, well, when do we multiply the types? That's when we type this in. We create a new type and we add those properties. That's when we multiply in programming. Uh, not something I think about when I program. Oh, I'm going to multiply these types. I just use them. Um, I guess you do too. So in this case, uh, since some type has eight values, and we have two properties of the same type, the product from this is that we can have 64 different types. It's eight times eight. Yeah. So product types, they are simple. Um, we have one other product type in Elm2. They're called tuples. It's when you're really lazy and don't want to name your properties, you can use a tuple. Uh, it's uh, very useful in, uh, when you do uh, like a computation, do several computations in a row and you need to s return like two values from a function, but you just use it locally, then tuples are really good. Because then you know what it is. If you're uh, passing around a tuple, it ca could get hard to know what uh, this boolean string actually means. Um, yeah. So that product types. Some types then. What are these? Can we add types? And how do we do that? Uh, most of our languages don't have this, or, there's, or they have a simple version of it. If we look at Elm, you can declare a some type like this. If you I don't think we have anything that we could call some type in JavaScript, uh, but in uh, like C Sharp, we have enums. That's the closest thing. But in C Sharp, an enum compiles to an integer, and you can cast any integer to the enum type, uh, even if you haven't declared a value for it. So they don't get it right, I think. Um, um, so these are called union types, because we list the, the values we can have for the type's shape. It has three different values. Um, and if we add a fourth value, you don't, yeah, we have four. But we can do more with the uh, union types in Elm. Uh, we can add values to each type. Uh, so now this, I, th I think they call this a, ty a type constructor. So when you create a square, uh, you have to pass an int to the... So in this example, I, I thought, well, um, 
how do I define a square? Well, all the sides in the square are of equal length. So we just need one value for that. A rectangle, it has a width and height, and they can be different. So we have two integers for that. And just for fun, uh, I made the circle radius a float. And of course, you can uh, put other union types or product types in this definition when you have more complex examples, but we'll come to that. Um, yeah. So, a little bit more code. Maybe we should try and execute this. So, uh, I'll, I'll switch over. There. I'm not going to type anything. I'm going to use the a REPL to execute the code, so I don't make any mistakes typing, at least. <laughs> so we create the type, and then to create an instance, we see that the, it's of type shape, and that has a, a square value of two. And of course, we can create the other types too. Uh, a nice little rectangle there and a circle. So, how would you use these values then? How, how do we get the, the radius out of the circle, for example? Because the, if you would pass this around, you would pass around the shape. And how do you know if it's a circle? Well, you have to use uh, pattern matching. And it looks like this. Uh, at first, we have the type signature. It's a shape, and we return a float. Uh, so you do a, a pattern matching. You write case, shape of, and then you have to list all the values of the shape. Because if you don't, you get a compiler error. And you, a, a nice one, too, actually. So if I only have these two, let's see. Yeah, it says I have a missing pattern. You need to account for this, the circle that I didn't. So add that. Um, so that's nice in uh, Elm. We add that. So when you add something to the shape, you get compilation errors and you know where to fix the code. Unless you use the wildcard pattern. Um, and that's like this. You can return like a hard code value. Uh, that would swallow all other cases. If I compile this, I would get a compile error because I have all the three values listed here. Uh, so the recommendation here is try to avoid that case uh, or be lazy and use that because one day you need it and you have a bug. I think it's better to get that compilation error than get something in runtime exception or something. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we can calculate this, use that function to see if it works. It seems so. Yeah. And the pipe operator, do everybody know about that? It's not about the uh, sum of product types, but it's a really nice thing in Elm. And so uh, um, if I rewrite it, how what, what happens is that it evaluates the expression on the left side, because everything in Elm is expressions. In, in C Sharp and Java, you have statements. So what happens here, it's evaluate that, and then that value is passed in as the last argument to the next expression, this function here. That, so it, it's like calling rectangle 5 with 3 there. And then it produces a new value. And that value is passed in as the last value to calc area. So you can write your codes like you read from left to right and from top down. 
in JavaScript, you have, if you want to call function G before F, you, you type F, parenthesis, G, then you have to read backwards. So they stole this from F sharp. <laughs> it was really nice. They had something from Haskell first, but this looked nicer, they thought. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just, yeah. We have some built in some types. Uh, one you may use a lot is the maybe type. It uh, has a, a type value here. The A is, so you replace it with a type. If you're doing C sharp in Java, you know um, generics, it's called. So if you have an int, you can create a maybe int. If you have a string, you can create a maybe string. Uh, so there, you don't have to create one maybe for each type that you want to use. You just you can reuse the one that's there. It's generic. Um, the result uh, is often used. Uh, it's used in when you make HTTP calls and uh, if you use web sockets. They sometimes fail, unfortunately. Then you get the error result, and you can choose an OK result. Um, yeah. When you get that far in Elm, you're, you're going to see it a lot. Um, so let's try a little more uh, complicated example. I didn't want to use the example you see on Wikipedia and everywhere else, where you create a tree because it's so mathy and functional programming, and some people get scared from that. So let's use sockets instead, because that's so easy. <laughs> um, so this is maybe how it would look like in uh, C-sharp or JavaScript, if you would program in sockets there. Um, you have a connection state, or some type, and we have the state here, and we have the server we're connecting to, um, and when we're connected, we have a session ID. In some protocols, you, you ping the server to see that they're there. Then you set these values. That's because everybody's maybe. Because you, uh, when you get disconnected, for example, uh, you set this one. But then maybe you should remember to uh, unset these, set them to nothing. Um, so that seems a little bit complicated to remember all these rules when you do stuff. And you probably forget some. Um, I know I have done that in the past. So we can do this better with Elm. So let's refactor this a bit. Uh, let's create a, a record type for each state that we have with the values they have. So when we are connecting, we have the that property and connected, we have a tuple of the last ping and the session ID and disconnected, we have the time step for when it was disconnected. So uh, in our enum from connection state, but we only had the names before, we add these values um, and that makes our connection info uh, a lot simpler. We have a state and we have the server. So if we compare this connection info, there's a lot of properties that we don't need. Uh, yeah. So now when we're connected, we have to set, uh, well, we don't have to set the last ping time. Maybe just when we connected, we don't have the ping, but we have a session ID. So when we get disconnected, we set this property, and then, and then the connection state is gone. It's no property we can use because the state is disconnected. So you can't use it wrong. And we have eliminated the, the illegal states. Uh, some call this type-driven development, the next version of TDD, <laughs> maybe. But uh, you need to write some tests. But uh, compared to this, you need to write a lot less tests. Because here you have, would have to write the, the all, all code that uses this record type, you have to check all the states that is set them correctly and so on. Here you get a compilation error if you try to set something that isn't there. If you try to set the session ID when you're disconnected, you get a compilation error. Yeah. 
that's good. Um, let's talk about a, a simple function call. I think most of us have written something like this. A function that you pass something into it, it search your database or maybe you have an array in memory or whatever and it returns something, in this case a customer. Um, that's like the uh, c sharp signature and this is how the signature would look in Elm, a string to customer. But I think we can do better than this. Because in a functional program you pass around functions. If you pass around this function signature, I mean, what string? I get a customer back. Is it the email? Is it the first name I'm going to pass in? Because that's probably a string too. I think we should do something about that. Well, the simplest thing is just to create an alias for string. We call it an email. But it's still a string. But then you can change the type signature. And, s and now you know what to pass in, that it's an email, and you get a customer back. But I think we can do even better, but you have to write like at least four lines of code more. Um, let's create the union type with only one value. Um, that has the value email and that's a string. So I would put this in a module, uh, an email module, and I would have two functions. One that creates an email because then we can put the validation for the email there. At least check that there's an at sign. Uh, and then we have one where we convert the email to a string. Then it's easy to use. In How would you do this in C-sharp, for example? Um, well, uh, you can look at how, how F-sharp code is compiled to MSIL and then decompile it to uh, C-sharp. What you get is a base class. Uh, and then each uh, uh, value here is a subclass of that. Um, and I tried it with uh, three simple properties. In, so it was like four lines of C sharp, F sharp, decompiled to C sharp. It was 500 lines of code because it adds. Uh, in, in F sharp, you have um, uh, structural equality. So when you create two different instances, it compares each property in these instances to see if they're equal. So it adds the get hash code equals. And it overrides those things. So. And I would never write that much C sharp for such a simple thing, really. Uh, I don't think anybody does. Well, maybe Uncle Bob. Uh, I would certainly not do it. It's too much. It's like when I programmed in C sharp, when I, so I used an enum, I always thought, oh, maybe I should create a class instead because that property belongs to that state in the enum. But it's just that little thing. Oh, no, I, I don't. I do it when, when it grows, maybe later. <laughs> uh, and I actually think I'm, I try to create clean code. And, as good code as I can, but uh, there's a limit to everyone. Uh, so now we have a nice signature to our uh, get customer function. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, if we show this. So when we pass in an email that matches a customer, it's pretty simple. We get a customer back. But if we send in an email that we don't have a match, what do we do? For example, in C Sharp and Java, we could throw a customer not found exception. Anyone think that's a good idea? Is it an exception? Well, I think exceptional cases is like out of memory exception. That's an exception. Um, and in Elm, you can't throw exceptions because you, can't, you ha don't have any exceptions there. You could uh, crash the entire program, perhaps. That's an, kind of an exception, but that's really bad user experience, I think. <laughs> so then what? We could return null. That's I've seen used many times when you don't find anything. Um, so then you pass the problem on to the caller. You think, oh, yeah, I got a customer. What's his first name? Dot first name. And now you get an exception, a null reference exception. 
Um, and in Elm you can't return null because they don't have nulls either. So now what? Well, in OO, there's in object orientation programming, there's a null object pattern. You know that. You create an object that represents the no customer thing. It seems to be hard to do. I've only seen one product used it a little bit. <laughs> Maybe because we are not good enough in OO, because we put the logic somewhere else. And then all of a sudden, this uh, null customer gets an invoice, and then you have a big problem. <laughs> and in functional programming, you, you separate the logic from the data. So there, it kind of don't make sense either. So we changed uh, the signature in Elm to a maybe customer, of course, because you pass in an email and you maybe get a customer back. That seems right. Huh? So I would say that uh, the C sharp and like these signatures, they kind of lie. They say they return a customer. We're not sure. Maybe you have to read the code to see what it actually returns when you don't find anything. But here it's, here it's obvious. It's a, you get a maybe customer. And then to get the value out, you have to do pattern matching. And then you know that nothing. Yeah, what should I do? In this case, I return an empty string. And if it's actually a customer, then he is the customer, and then I can get the name out. So you can't forget to check it. You get a compilation error. But in C Sharp and JavaScript, you have if not null, then I can do something. This is much better. Yeah, and that was all I had.